Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust I find you well. We thank the Lord for giving us yet another experience to reflect upon His Word as the working week comes to an end. And we want to go back into the book of Genesis, and we are still at chapter 22, and we want to look at the Moriah experience as Abraham wraps up with his son Isaac. Consider with me verse 11. It reads as follows. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he replied, here I am. Verse 12. Then he said, do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we answer, here I am, in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of considering your word. Dear Lord, as we go into this study, we want to hear your voice. We want to hear you speak to us in a clear and still voice so that we may inform our conduct and transform our behavior and above all, touch our hearts. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and ask, Amen and Amen. My dear friends, as the week draws to a close, why don't we raise just five points as usual? Just five points. Excuse me. Point number one. When the righteous are in danger, a call comes from heaven. Notice that every time when God has been calling Abraham, he just calls him once. Abraham, he answers, here I am. And the conversation goes on. But this time, because his child Isaac is in danger, the child of God, Isaac is in danger, God calls him twice. Abraham, Abraham, with that emphasis, with that urgency, heaven does not waste time. When God's children are in danger, heaven will intercede. Heaven will come in and with urgency call upon those who are about to do us harm and tell them to stand down. May heaven tell those who are about to do your harm to stand down. Even this prayer is a prayer of promise. Claim it. May they stand down in heaven. Call them twice. Point number two. God is not only concerned about Isaac. The Bible says, he said, do not lay a hand on the boy and or do anything to him. Heaven is concerned about what happens to boys and girls. Many a time we go through the Bible and we look at the Bible and we're thinking about adults. But heaven is saying, we are concerned. Heaven says, I am concerned. God says, I am concerned. And Jesus even said these words, whosoever abuses these little ones would wish that a stone was tied around his neck and he was cast into the deepest part of the sea. Such is the attitude of heaven towards those who abuse little children and nothing should be done to them. They should not be physically abused. They should not be abused in any way. Nothing should be done to them. Some of our boys and girls are being molested and raped and they're being raped even by their parents. Such should not be done in the name of the Lord. I adjure you, such should not be done. So says the word of the Lord. Point number three. God now reveals a certain mystery that when I read it, I found it very difficult to wrap my head around this text. How does verse 12 go on? He says, for now, I know that you fear God. For now, I know. Now, as I was doing my Bible reading, I learned that God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. God is omniscient. God knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. Not the end from the beginning, but everything in between. God knows everything. Now, when God says, for now I know, the question that comes to the back of my mind is, did he not know before? But I, I, I had to come to this conclusion. Help me come to this conclusion. I hope you share it too. God is actually saying to Abraham, this I have known and always known, you fear me. But you didn't know as much as I know. Now that I know, you know 
that you fear me, you are ready to be blessed. Now you know what it is to fear me. Now you know what it is to do. And thus saith the Lord. For now I know that is the mystery. The mystery is when man decides to do what God has called upon to him. That is a mystery. For we are evil and continually evil. Like the children who were thrown into the flood. For they were continually evil. Point number four. Fearing God has always been the test. Fearing God will always be the test. The question is, do you fear God? Most of us think fearing God is about being afraid of him. Fearing God is about trepidation. But fearing God is about keeping his commandment. Doesn't the wise man say? Now, hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. That is to fear God. It has been the test before. It shall always be the test. This is the test. God does not change the syllabus. He may change their exercises, their tests that go with the syllabus, but overall, it shall always be the test. I have the privilege of working in a university and particularly in a registered department. We administer exams every semester. And as students, when they're taking theology, they're taking accounting, they're taking English, they're taking computers, whatever discipline it is that they're in. Those who pass, guess what? They pass where others have failed. And those who fail, they fail where others are going to pass. That is the reality of our Christian walk. That is the reality of our walk with Christ. We pass where others have failed. Rewind, go back to the book of Genesis and the account goes as follows. When Christ gave Abraham a deep sleep, I mean Adam, he gave him a deep sleep. In that deep sleep came out of the bone of his bones. That was Eve, the only wife that he ever received. The only person that he ever received from God was given unto him. As he had this person who was so dear to him, she then led the course towards eating the forbidden fruit. After the forbidden fruit had been taken, she brought it to Adam. And Adam said to himself, could God give me another? And he came to the conclusion, there is no way that God will give me another. And he partook of the fruit. Some scholars have even opined, Eve fell into sin, but Adam walked into sin. He walked with his eyes wide open. And he said, I cannot let go of this beautiful, beautiful lady that God has blessed me with. But God gives Abraham the same test, the only son that he has ever had. And God says, hand him over. As he is called upon to hand him over, he hands him over without reservations, without excuses. He obeys. Because of his obedience, God says, now I know. Could the same be said of you? Now I know you fear me. Now I know you love me. Now I know you keep my commandments. Please do reflect on these few points that we have rest as we go through this weekend. And may God bless you. May God keep you. And may this be said of you and I. Now I know you fear me. Let us come back to the Mount of Moriah on Monday morning. Until then, blessings. And peace.